Okay, so we're nearly there. We're now going to build the shutter module and we can tidy this all up a little bit, make it look nice. So we're going to go back into our designer module and or designer mode. And to build the um, the shutter, we, we just need um, a slider again. That's the best way to do this. It's up to you now. You can start to choose your own your own methods based on what you think the UI will be be best at. We could have another another box uh, with a number in it, but we don't really need a number for the for the shutter. It's it's um, it's kind of something you look at. So we're going to put a slider in for strobing and drag it down here so it's not in the way. Um, I made it slightly smaller than the intensity one, and I'm going to call that shutter. The value, right? So we don't it doesn't really matter here what the value is because um, we could do a map ramp uh, a, a, oh, a map ranged unclamped again to to modify it. But let's just check what's actually going on here. So we have no function from zero to four, and then it strobes from five to sixty eight. It goes from from fast to slow. So we actually need the value to go between 5 and 68. That's what actually needs to come out of the, um, the system at the other end. So I am going to put in 5 and 68. Because it, we can't see it on the sliders. It doesn't really matter, does it? Um, in fact, no, I'm, I'm going to put 4, 4 to 68, because 4 being the first number is actually uh, it's being open. Is that right? Yeah, 0 to 4 is no function. So it needs to default to not doing anything. Um, now we could start at zero, but uh, it should still work at four because in theory of the light is, is programmed to do nothing if it gets a DMX value of four on that channel. So at four to 68, we don't need to reveal that number anywhere. It's not important to, uh, to the UI, to the user. And we're gonna go back to our on value changed again. We're gonna drag this up here, add it to the others. So we've got all of our UI controls coming up here as, as elements. It's not very neat, but we'll sort it out in a minute. Um, we are going to create a, a variable. We're going to call that variable shutter. And it's been set. And that's it. We just need to call it back into the object over here. Now this shutter can do other things, right? it has all these macro settings. So this is actually a nice opportunity to show you how we can use multiple variables. Okay, so we've now set this to be a get, so it will push into here. And anything between zero and 68 will call um, a value that will create the strobing. If we go back to the manual again, we'll see we have a macro at 101, 113, 125. Let's just pick two of these macros as an example, okay? Just to, just to demonstrate a point. So let's go back into our designer mode. We're gonna create a couple of buttons and these buttons are gonna trigger a macro. Macros being pre-programmed sequences. And we did buttons earlier, so we're just gonna create a couple. Uh, I'm not going to too much. So I'll put those there. Uh, I'm going to name this one macro1 and I'm going to call this one macro2 and I'm going to add some text to them and I'm going to call this text macro1 you guessed it and call this one macro2 and I'm going to select both of these buttons and just put on size to content just so it fills it up nicely. Okay, um, I'm gonna go back into our graph. Normally I click on the button um, option in the designer mode, but I'm just gonna show you how it works in the graph mode. You find your button, here it is, macro one, and there's the on clicked button. So I'm gonna add this here. Drag it up. Let's get to that test button, it's really going in the way now. So move these as well. And macro two, click there and on clicked. It's a bit annoying that it keeps adding it out at the bottom. There we go. Now what we're gonna do is use this to set a, um, a, a, fit, a number into this variable for shutter. Now this variable shutter at the moment is getting its number from the slider, but we don't have to use it. If we take the, uh, the shutter variable we created, 
we'll create a set we'll link it to this so this event when we click the button it will tell this to set a number now we don't have to join this up to anything we can set the number here and it will push it through so the number we want for macro 1 is 101 so we're going to create 101 and that's going to push a value of 101 into that variable and we'll do it again uh, another one here set now you could do this in an array um, and I'm showing you different ways of doing things 113 that's what it said so now we've got three different ways of setting the variable for shutter we've got three identical variables here we've got the one that gets the value from the slider and we've got two that get its value from the set node but will only be activated if you press the button so let's compile and save let's go back to DMX console let's hit play it will do its thing put itself back again we're going to open it up uh, and now I'm going to spin this to change the shutter speed there we go so that's slow and fast and I go back to all the way to the bottom and it turns itself off if I hit macro 1 it's loaded the macro if I load macro 2 it's loaded a different macro and I can then go back to my shutter information click back to macro 1 it'll overwrite it whatever you press it's always going to push the new number into that variable all right so there we go that's how we use variables to create all that shutter control um, in the uh, the next lesson we're just going to tidy up the UI a little bit um, in the blueprints just to make things look nice and then we move on to the next chapter where we're going to look at how we can save and store presets using the save game command